factoring simple trinomials. And what do we mean by simple trinomials? Well, first of all, a trinomial is an algebraic expression that has three terms, hence the word tri. Tri means three, separated by plus and minus signs. And I call them simple because the first term, the x squared term, has a coefficient of one. That makes them relatively simple. And so we'll go ahead and start showing how to, how to factor trinomials that have the first term with a, with a coefficient of 1. And uh, later on, we'll go ahead and do the more general type of trinomials where the first term can have another coefficient other than 1. That makes it a little bit more complicated. But let's start with these. So the way I always look at these is that the result will be in this format. I'm going to have the product of two binomials as the factored form of that trinomial, just like here. We have a trinomial, and it'll end up, in this case, as a product of two binomials. First of all, since the first term is an x squared, a 1x squared, I know that I have to have an x here and an x there. The next thing I look at is the signs. If all the signs are positive, I need a plus here and a plus there. We'll look at the other cases later when they're not like over here, when they're not all positive. Here's two negatives, here's one negative. How do we deal with it there? We'll show you later. But in the case that they're all positive, you put a plus and a plus, and you have an x squared here, so you put an x and an x. Now, to come up with the last two numbers here and here, I know that the product has to equal 18 and the sum has to equal 9. So I'm, I'm looking for two numbers that add up to 9, and when I multiply them together, I have 18. So if you're not sure how to do that, you can say, all right, I can start with 2 times 9, that's 18. 3 times 6, that's 18. Um, I guess that's the only choices I have. And so it either has to be 2 times 9 or 3 times 6, but they have to add up to 9. And the only two that add up to 9 is these two right there. So the only solution I can have is a 3 and a 6. And there's the factored form of that problem. Of a trinomial that is uh, simple in format, simple because the first term has a coefficient of 1, so I know that the factored form will look like this. It'll be the product of two binomials, just like what we have over here. I have a trinomial, and if it can be factored, it will look something like that. Since the first term has a 1 as a coefficient, I know I have to have an x and an x here. Now the next thing I look at the signs, and I see that the middle term is negative, and the final term is positive. So the fact that there's a negative there in the middle term, that means I need to have at least a negative somewhere, otherwise I, can't up and I cannot end up with a negative 10x. But if the last number here, the last term, is positive, I can only have at least one negative, and then when I multiply the two numbers together, end up with a positive here, that means they both must be negative. There we go. Now I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get 21. When I add them, I get a negative 10. So how many ways are there to get a 21? So 7 and 3, that would work. Uh, 7 times 3, and that's probably the only choice. And yes, they add up to be the number 10. So if I put a 3 and a 7 there, that should be the answer. If you're not sure, if you're a little shaky, say, well, was that correct? Quickly go ahead and multiply everything out again. So we can do a check. If I multiply the x times the x, I get an x squared, multiply the x times the minus 7, that's a minus 7x, multiply the minus 3 times the x is a minus 3x, multiply the negative 3 times the negative 7 gives me a plus 21. If I add these together, that's equal to x squared minus 10x plus 21, and sure enough, that's what I started with, so I did it correctly. So whenever you're not sure, always multiply them together again and see if you end up with what you started. All right, let's take a look at this last one. Again, I know that the final form, the final factored form will be like that, the product of two binomials. Since the coefficient of the first term, the x squared term is a 1, I can write a 1 and an, an x there and an x there. Now look at the signs. The middle term is negative, so I need to have at least one negative sign, and then the last term is negative, and the only way I can multiply two numbers together and then put a negative, that means I have to multiply a positive times a negative. And so I need a plus and a minus. Now, I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply them together, I get 33. Well, that doesn't give you a lot of choices. On top of that, when you add them together, you get a negative 8. 
So I know that one is positive and the other one is negative, and when I add them together, I get a negative 8, which means the bigger of the two numbers must be negative. 33. How about 11 times 3? That seems to do it. And since 11 is the bigger one, and the bigger one must be negative, I'm going to put the 11 over here and the 3 over there. And sure enough, a minus 11 plus 3 gives me a negative 8, and a negative 11 times a positive 3 gives me a negative 33, so that must be correct. If you're not sure, multiply everything together, and you should see if you get the same result back.